Mechanics love to hate engineers. It everywhere. Really, GM? I <laughs> hate this career. Well, are engineers really the ones to blame when it comes to how hard cars are to work on? Well, today we brought in real mechanics to break down modern car failures from TikTok. Welcome to Real Mechanic Stuff. So this is a perfect example of why I hate the automotive industry. Whoa. I hate this job. Like I've been there. I sucks. feel you, bro. Just show you. Want to do a belt tensioner and idler pulley on it? I figure not too bad, you know? That sounds like Bill Burr. An idler pulley, right? How long does the f***ing bolt need to be? A mile f***ing long, right against the what? frame? What? That, that's pretty the thing up. I hate this <laughs> career. I would never recommend it to anybody. The engineers can f <laughs> you f***ing <laughs> Wow. Okay, well, I understand his frustration. Because that bolt is up against the frame, what does this guy have to do now? He's more likely going to have to loosen or disconnect the motor mounts and jack up the engine so he can get space to pull that bolt out. Probably costing him an extra hour, easily yeah. minimum. You don't get paid for all that mm -hmm. extra time that you have to go out of your way to do something. All because some engineer decided to make a bolt an inch too long. It's supposed to be so simple. Usually most cars, you just zip the belt out from the top. And this is something where I say a mechanic needs to do some work on a new design yeah. and point things like that out because that yeah. bolt could probably be a quarter inch shorter. Something like this ever happened to you before? Yes. Yeah. On that <laughs> traverse. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How much would you charge someone to do this job? I wouldn't do it again. You just wouldn't do it? <laughs> Would you blame the engineer like this guy did, or would you blame the factory? I blame engineers on that one. Yeah, definitely, engineers. That's engineers. <laughs> definitely engineers. Definitely engineers. They didn't think about nothing right there. So with the Chevy, who are we going after? The factory or the engineer? The engineer. Me too. Let's yeah. go find them. I have air a time or two. Imagine you just bought a brand new Audi Q3 like this user on TikTok. And this happens after a rainstorm. Oh, no. Oh, drip. That sucks so bad. Yeah, I am definitely taking that car back to the dealer. Oh, it's raining oh, on the man. inside. Yep. Jeez. That's bad. That's going to turn to a nasty electrical problem. It's coming through the light covering. The, yeah, the dome the, light covering. Yep. Filling up and then dripping down onto the center console. <laughs> I have seen this happen a time or two. I just had my Denali leak like that. Do you think a dealership would even have a mechanic try to fix that or would it just be easier to get the customer a new car? It would be easier probably just to get the customer a new car, but they might keep it at the dealer and attempt to fix it so they can resell it, mm -hmm. but it depends on how bad the damage is. You don't even want them to fix that. You don't want no. any part of that mess. I would be pissed. Yep. Next stop, dealership. Yeah. All right, who do you think's to blame for this one? The factory or engineers? That's probably a factory problem. Unless this is happening on a lot of Q3s, it's probably not an engineering problem. Yeah, agreed. I blame the factory. Factory. All right, let's see what this next clip is. Yeah, they stole my car. They took everything. Damn, they did take everything. <laughs> I can't believe this. Oh, wow. They stole a fuse box. That's a cat. They stole the cat. <laughs> Do you know what's going on there? I mean, it just looks like everything was taken off the car, like yeah. she said. It's pretty well documented that you can start one of these cars with a USB drive. <laughs> <laughs> Heck yeah. Kia forgot to put the keyless entry shit so the chip will read the key mm -hmm. and won't turn on. One guy found out, everybody else found out. Man. Especially you guys put it on the internet. If you own a Kia, what would you do to prevent that? The old school way. You gotta put a kill switch somewhere. Yeah. A kill switch is something that you put in a part of the wiring harness to kill battery power to ignition or fuel unless you flip a switch. We used to do it on Hondas back in the day so people wouldn't steal them. Uh, would you call this an engineering fail or an assembly fail? That's engineering. Yeah, I would say engineering. That's engineering well. all the way. Yeah. That's going to be an engineering problem. Mm hmm. On the next clip, one would think that the most expensive cars would have the lowest chances of engineers making boneheaded mistakes. Have you ever checked out the build quality of a McLaren? Check this out. This is a 2022 McLaren. Set. No, not a McLaren. Yeah, that bolt came fully loose, totally disengaged. Oh no. This, this bolt was just. Oh no, my dude. It looks like two little support things. I think they're supporting the turbos. The washers under these bolts are rusted. Like Ooh. literally, the car got looks like low car. Ship on a transporter truck and brought right over here. Only has 43 miles. Oh man! That means that washer is metal. Not coated. They didn't even 
Oh, it's stainless steel. Oh, it's hitting the. Oh, no. Yeah, I'm spending this much money on a car. I'm noticing all these, too. I don't even know what to say. Why you still got the car, my dude? Yeah. Oh, I, think he's, I think he's pre-checking it, yeah. Oh, I'll take that back. So that's a McLaren, an expensive car that's been hand-assembled, and they're using that as, you know, something to be proud of, which yeah. it could be, but we saw a few issues there. They don't have the build numbers that all the mainstream manufacturers mm -hmm. have, so their manufacturing process is so different, and it's not going to be consistent, because a lot of that stuff is hand-done by mm -hmm. human, and as humans, we make mistakes. Yeah, it looks like they need to step up their QC department. Do you think there's any consideration for mechanics at all with manufacturing of a car like this? Oh, uh, no, 100% not. They care about functionality of the car and they care about how much it's going to cost to get that functionality. It should be hand-to-hand. -hand. So get the people with the ping. For this McLaren, who messed up, the factory or the engineers? I'm going to say that's another factory manufacturing problem. I'm almost positive the McLaren engineers would not uh, make that bad yeah. mistake. <laughs> I'm going to go back to the same thing, the builder's fault. It's like building Legos, but yeah. like doing it wrong. So what can you do if you buy your dream car and it just sucks? Bought a new car recently and honestly, it was just garbage. Oh, it's a Jeep, mm. so. <sighs> nice. Always stalling, making weird noises, and I had to tow it to the dealership for repairs multiple times. It's a Jeep. Luckily, well, yeah. about Lemon Law. Because say, the dealership Lemon Law. It, I was able to get all my money back. Pretty good tip. Jeeps are notorious for electrical problems. For those who are not familiar with what a lemon is, because that's kind of an old school term. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> You're referring to a car that it has nothing but problems. And so the lemon law states that if you buy a brand new car under warranty, if you take it in for a problem or a repair needed, and they are not able to fix that problem, now the dealer has three tries to fix that problem. And if they don't get it in three tries, by law they have to to buy that vehicle back. <laughs> I think the problem with Jeep is Chrysler. They started to take on a lot of habits that Mercedes does with their cars. They started adding modules for everything. These cars will have 20, 30, 40 modules in them sometimes. It depends on the gear you're working on. And that leads to problems. Problems like this, where things yeah. don't work. Jeep used to be a box, badass motor, just go off-roading, yep. and you feel badass mm -hmm. driving that. Now it's like, you hop in there, all these electronics obviously don't work. Mm -hmm. Just like with your project car, your lawn needs the right fuel to perform at its best. That's why you should use today's sponsor, Sunday, the ultimate boost for your grass. And just like a quick and easy oil change, they are a breeze to use. You remove the cap, attach the spray nozzle, attach the hose, turn on the water, and boom! You're feeding your lawn natural, plant-based ingredients. With Sunday, lawn care is convenient thanks to its customizable subscription tailored to your lawn needs. You'll receive the right products at the right time, shipped straight to your front door for free. From fertilizers, weed control, and even pet patch repair, Sunday gives your lawn the boost it deserves. Head to GetSunday.com slash RMS and use code RMS30 to get 30% off all lawn care plans. Now. Back to the show. 2022 Tesla Model S Plaid, fully loaded, and this is why it sucks. After taxes and registrations. I feel bad for that guy. I feel bad for anyone that falls for this. Honestly, I don't feel bad. It was just delivered, has no miles. Look at this panel gap. That's an air gun. I'm fitting. Well, that's a big the gap. gap. That's a huge gap. There's like a boxer's teeth gap down right there. <laughs> that's how poor this alignment is. What's going on with your cars, Elon? How are you sending people this for this much money? For all the money that you're paying? I know. I've heard of these problems happening before. They also seem to have problems with their door handles quite a bit. So much so to where they have technicians in the shop that only do door handles. Tesla's had a lot of issues lately with their production line. Famously, I think it was during 2020, they were assembling cars in the parking lot of their factory under some tents. It's kind of like one of the first things a Tesla hater might bring up is the build quality of these cars. Have you worked on Tesla? I've worked on Teslas. Do you think they're uh, good engineered cars or awful? You know what? They're probably engineered right, but they're not built right. Honestly, everything right now yeah. that you f buy is not built right. I don't care what anybody says. Would you blame COVID for that? I don't blame COVID. I blame us. Oh. No, we're just trying to save f 
money trying to get pump a mile out and not pay attention to like mm -hmm. the detail why you buy a car yeah a brand new one exactly it looks like a lot of alignment issues mm -hmm. of panels you could probably mess with them loosen some bolts line some stuff and probably make most of that happen as far as the interior pieces showing inside i'd be giving tesla a call for that one do you think that's uh that's the fault of engineers or the people putting the car together i would say it's probably a combination of both who's to blame here the factory right. yeah that tesla just looked like it was put together sloppy Mechanics sit at the bottom of a waterfall in which every new car begins at the top of that waterfall as a concept. Over the next two to five years, this concept flows through design, engineering, manufacturing, marketing, distribution, and sales before finally landing in shops and garages all around the world. Because of how far away they sit, mechanics are often ignored by the people at the top of the waterfall. And as the old saying goes, always rolls downhill. The drain plug or something like uh, oh. uh, Or maybe not. I mean, oil is coming out, yeah. so. Looks like there's oil. Oh, is this the oil pan? Oh, no. It's oh, stuck. I know what's about to happen. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, 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 oh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> everywhere. Wow, that oil does not look good. No, it didn't. It's like a lot of fuel in there or something. Yeah, or it looks really thin, too. Listen, when you pull that drain bolt out, where you think it's gonna go, bro? Or put a piece of cardboard. Mm. You gotta be smarter mm. than the average bear. Mm. I think it's one of those little things that get overlooked and it's yeah. just a problem for mechanics. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no the one drain plug still comes that. out, it mm -hmm. still drains. It just makes a mess for the guy who yep. has to do it. That's it. So we're calling this the engineer's fault or the factor's fault? Engineer. Engineer's fault all day. Oh. All day. It's going to be the engineer, but I'm going to choose a third option. I'm going to say the mechanic. Ooh. I know. I, I think I agree. I mean, maybe this is his first time doing it. It but might be. probably not if he had the phone going already. He That's... knew what was going to happen. All right, we've got one more clip to show you that will really make your blood boil. But before we do that, Angelina, remind the people where they can find you. You can find me on Instagram at Miss A the Shop Teacher or on YouTube at Miss A the Shop Teacher. My name is Sandro, and you guys can find us at Miranda Shop on Instagram. You can find me on Instagram, BJ underscore EJ6. Hell yeah, well, thanks for coming in, man. Thanks, bro. We have a 2016 GMC Acadia, apparently, on these vehicles the power steering system will leak and it leaks in a really inconvenient spot right on top of the o2 sensors right there that's power steering pressure hose it's leaking per the technical service bulletin from gm if it leaks into that wiring harness replace power steering pressure hose and engine bay wiring oh harness. wow wiring Oof. that's expensive really gm that's why he lost his hair the oxygen sensor is to read oxygen in the exhaust in order to let the computer know if the engine is using too much fuel or not enough. So it works on a closed loop feedback system. So if it's getting a continuous false signal, it's going to continue to make bad decisions. And depending on which direction it goes can end up with uh, carbon deposits, bad fuel economy, stuff like that. So if you were just to ignore that problem, what would happen? Worst case scenario, yeah. a fire. Yeah. Yeah, you got oil leaking at the back of the engine which right. can get into a lot of hot places it yep. shouldn't be why do you think engineers didn't catch that probably because they didn't have a mechanic check the car first yeah and it's one of those things too that will only happen after a certain amount yeah. of time i think engineers tend to think in a perfect world i was about to say that i feel like engineers design cars not realizing that cars break yeah things wear out yeah. things leak they are most concerned with getting that car through the warranty period and after that what happens, happens. On your own. All right, who are we blaming here? Factory engineers or mechanics? Uh, It's gonna be an engineer. Sure. The engineer should have designed it in a different way. Mm. From your response, I'm imagining that you're blaming the engineer on this one. Yep. There are so many bad engineering decisions out there that we can't keep track of them all. That's why we need you to tell us what you're seeing out there down in the comments below. Also, if you're an engineer and you've got some beef with mechanics, <laughs> we want to know about that too. So make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Let us know what you got going on out there. I'm Zach. My name's Justin. My name is Nolan. This has been Real Mechanic Stuff. See you next time. Y'all, have a good one.